I hope you will now all join me in welcoming Mr. Mark Metabadi. for those kind words of introduction. <clears throat> um, this is my first visit to uh, Big Rabbits. Uh, I remember when uh, I was at the airport, I asked the, the young lady behind the counter, said, you know, there's Grand Rabbits and the Big Rabbit. Uh, you know, aren't they similar? <laughs> <laughs> Grand and big. So, oh no no no. <laughs> there is big rapids, and it's not like grand rapids. <clears throat> but you know, it's, it's such a, <clears throat> a special privilege for me to to visit here um, because I've always wondered aloud at times, you know, how a book that I wrote so many years ago and that just poured forth from the deepest part of my soul could resonate with so many people across race, nationality, faith, class, gender, religions, and why the connection? The obvious of is to book about achieving a dream, or it's the story of a young man's quest for an education, or it is a story about oppression in South Africa in the form of party. Hopefully all those by the end of our communion this evening that, that will become apparent and will remain in each one of you as a seed so that when you <coughs> go back your homes, your workplace, your schools, your communities, you will become the light that my mother was in my life when it was so dark. There is a great deal of darkness in the world today. Sadly, that pall of darkness has covered what to me is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It is a country which led me to write a description of some years ago when my son and I journeyed from North Carolina to Oregon that I'd like to to read to you. <clears throat> when Nathan and I drove almost 3,000 miles in a rider truck of dubious quality, which groaned all the way under the load of books, and we had to skirt the Rockies and go into Wyoming, Such a cross-country trip had benefits that far outweighed the inconvenience of an unreliable truck. In clement weather and cheap motels, one such benefit was the opportunity to commune with snow-capped mountains, open blue skies, mighty rivers, quiet streams, Desolate deserts, bustling cities, idyllic hamlets, and the tranquil farms of this immense and very blend, which, taken collectively, embody a truth that puts life in perspective. 
This truth is also etched on the faces of the people who call America home. People who profess different faiths, wear different skin colors, celebrate different cultures, laugh differently, follow different political creeds and speak at times different tongues. Some were born here, others were dragged here in chains, others fled persecution and found a sanctuary here. And still others like myself willingly chose America as home because this country embodies so many of our cherished hopes, ideals and dreams. Regardless of how we came here, this big, beautiful and blessed land we call America, in exchange for priceless freedoms and opportunities, we cannot imagine life without, requires us to fulfill a tremendous responsibility on which changes the destiny of the world. This responsibility <clears throat> is what my life has been about. Though trapped in hell as measured by that one square mile ghetto without running water or electricity, where homes for most people were shacks without plumbing, where food was scarce and children prostituted themselves for muscles, where brutal police raids taught children to hate. Even though that was home for the first 18 years of my life, leading me at age 10 to think of killing myself because life seemed so full of suffering and pain. And I felt abandoned in it, unloved, unwanted, and even betrayed by being deprived of the opportunity to fulfill my potential as a human being. Even there, where innocence dies young and children cannot afford to be children and live, where the rites of passage are not proms or graduation ceremonies, but gangs and teenage motherhood, where dreams are strangled and hope dies. Even there, amid that darkness, there was this unextinguishable light that showed me my destiny.